Okay, welcome to this evening's uh, regular business meeting. We will have a moment of silent prayer be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would, please stand with me. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. All right, first order of business is to conduct a roll call. Commissioner DeMont Davis. Present. Commissioner Gail Hambrick. Present. Commissioner Sana Gregory. I am here. Commissioner Felicia Franklin. Present. Uh, Madam Clerk, we all present and counted for. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to our February 16, 2021 board meeting. Our first order of business is the adoption of the agenda. Do any members of the board have any amendments? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, one. Um, Commissioner Hambert. Yes, I believe it's number 14. Let me check to be sure. Hold on here. Yes, 14. I know we discussed 13, but I don't recall us discussing 14. So I want to either pull that off or pull that out or take that off. And I'll second your motion. All right, this is resolution 2021-42. Uh, Commissioner Hambrick is yeah. wanting to remove it from the agenda in its entirety. Is there a who made the second? Gregory did. Commissioner Gregory made the second. Uh, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Hold on a second. Mr. Reed. Board, if, if you take this, their, um, their companion, are they? They are. If you take this one off and you decide and you vote on 41, you're going to have an, a fiscal impact for those employees that are listed in 42. I'm lost on that. Can you explain so, further? resolution 20, 21 41 mm -hmm. that deals with elected officials that's on your agenda now. Your, the resolution that this ties to, which was resolution 2014-202, that resolution had both elected officials and these other employees that are listed in resolution 2021-42 that, uh, that's on your agenda now. If you pass, if you pass um, resolution 2021-41, without addressing res the people who were impacted with in resolution 2021-42, then you will be adjusting their salary because it will repeal 2014-202, if that makes sense. So you're saying everybody, well, go ahead, Commissioner Amber. Yeah, well, um, my thing is we did not discuss uh, 42 and from my reading, it is not inclusive of the other employees on the other elected officials, just one or two, I believe. So I, I'm not clear and I'm not understanding. Uh, Can I make a recommendation then uh, for us to consider just taking these two items separately and then we can um, consider them because I do hear Commissioner as well as Attorney Reed, but as um, I think I've stated before, We've also made impacts to salaries absent of following what you're recommending now. So we already are in a place that we've got to correct some things. So um, I would ask if the board would be willing to entertain just taking those two items separately and let the board's vote be the board vote. However it falls, it falls. And if that's a motion, I second. Well, well you would no, have to I amend no, your motion, uh, Madam Commissioner. Uh, you would have to amend your motion, and then that way we would be able to take it separately with proper explanation, as you're asking, if that's okay. Well, I, I don't, is that true? Uh, 
Yeah. Hold on, hold on, everybody. Everybody, hold on, hold on. Everybody have a sidebar conversation except for the chairman. So let's, sure, let's get it back in order. Chairman, Let, let's get it back in order. Okay, so if we, we still are not addressing, if we pass one and don't pass the other, then it still will be in uh, full effect. It, Hold so, on a second, Commissioner Hamburg. So right now, there was a motion and a second to, to take. We've already passed it. Um, I don't no, think we, we all voted on it yet. You just made a yes, motion and a second. No, we, no, we voted on it. We voted on yes. Oh, yeah. we, okay. vote, we did vote. So all she right. would have to rescind her motion. Right. You but do that. but what's the relevance of us voting to pass one without the other? Um, the relevance would be that those individuals that are listed in 42, their salaries would be, uh, the, the supplements that you've already approved that they're being paid right now will be gone as effective tonight. So were we notified that those two were tied together like that? Um, yes. I recall talking about it. I'm not at liberty to discuss more than that, but yes, right. that was that was an item that was um, that was discussed. So we either need to go for it, or we need to just take both off and then re re rediscuss it. Um, no, no, I'm ready to go ahead. Okay, so no. you want to rescind your motion and leave them on? Well, uh, I, well, uh, com Commissioner uh, I like Franklin, why don't you? Yeah, why don't you just make the motion? Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, yes, Commissioner. I would like to make the motion that um, even though we just voted to hold that item, I make a motion that we take both items separately for a separate vote for a discussion during this board meeting. And that is my official motion. And that is both item 41 and 42. We've already Second. made a motion to take it off the agenda. But so, Commissioner Hambrick has the ability to rescind her emo motion. With Commissioner Franklin, vote. if I could board. speak, please. All right. She needs to rescind her motion, and then she can go back and make a motion to, to take them separately or whoever. Sure. But right now, we need to rescind the motion, uh, or Commissioner Hambrick needs to rescind her motion to take off the item that we removed by vote. Is that your what you okay, want to make? Okay, well, motion? let me say this. This is what I would like to do. I would like to rescind my motion that was made previously, and instead of taking 42 off just take it off the mm -hmm. consent agenda let's take one motion at a time first of all you want to rescind your motion to yes remove 2021-42 can i correct and there was a second and we vote is there a second for the extension okay, okay commissioner franklin second the motion all right can i ask a question oh, hold on a second go ahead okay yeah we're, we're asking we're questions good question, question. If we just remove item 13, does that accomplish just what we're talking about? Taking both no. off the agenda? No, they got to be both. Based. No. Okay. Any other questions? What I would like to, my motion this time is uh, I would like to take 42 off the consent agenda. But before you do that, you all need to vote on the yeah decision. we're not making another motion we need we have a first uh we have a motion and a second to uh reinstate it so those in favor aye aye, aye. opposed it's unanimous now do you have another motion you'd like to make in reference to 13 and 14 commissioner hamburg uh yes i would like to uh take 42 20 21 42 off the consent agenda and put it second on, I didn't ask for a second yet, so that I'm clear. You want re resolution 2021-42 to go on to the uh, regular uh, consent, uh, uh, regular agenda. Is there a second? I'll second. Second. Second by Commissioner Franklin. Any questions? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. It's unanimous. Are there any others? Amendment uh, to the agenda. Um, I'd like to pull. Item number eight, 2021 36, from the consent agenda to be discussed separately. All right. To discuss separately or take it off altogether? Uh, discuss separately. All right. The motion to put on the regular agenda also, resolution 2021 36, 
abolish, keep Clayton clean and beautiful program. I'll second the motion. Any questions on that one? Those in favor, aye. 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 Oppose? Nay. Okay, 4 1, it passes. Uh, to put now on, that we to get put everybody? On, to put on the regular agenda. Passes to put on the regular agenda. I, I, um, I voted nay against putting that on a regular agenda. I'm I sorry. voted nay what? as well. Nay as well. Okay, so okay my, 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 so you want to leave it on the consent agenda? Oh, I thought we put it on the. Uh... His motion was to hold it, put it on the regular agenda for discussion. And y'all voted no, so you want to leave it on the regular agenda? I mean, uh, no, I voted agenda. on the regular agenda. Okay, okay that's what his motion was. Take it off was. the consent. Yeah, take it off the consent. Okay. That's okay. what the motion okay, that's was. That's what the motion was for. But, uh, okay. so let's try this one more time. All right. The motion is to take it off of the consent agenda, put it on the regular agenda. Those in favor, aye. 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 Oppose. Nay. All right, 4-1, it goes on the regular agenda. Are there any others? No, you good? Okay. All right. No others? All right, here no others. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. I'll second the motion. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Next public comment, citizens will be given three minutes maximum time limit to speak before the Board of Commissioners. Please state your name and county of residency for the record. Speak clearly into the microphone and speakers should be courteous, respectful, and not make any disparatory remarks or use abusive language when addressing the Board. Orlando Good. Yes, sir. Uh, Orlando Gooden, Clayton County. Someone told me once, the thing that you fear the most is what you end up with. My fear with universal trash service was starting a monopoly, price increases, and poor customer service. Waste management has already done that. CLM, Waste Industries, and GFL, they're all associates or subsidiaries. Initially, Universal Trash Service had questions about administrative cost. GFL calls them operational expenses. It has increased every year from 43 now to 71. Poor customer service where you're on hold for 45 minutes because they missed three pickups in two months and try to get a credit. The solution could be universal trash service, but with a strict customer service index that will measure pickup service, customer service, and reliability. Review the Clayton County Citizens Survey. Then when the county negotiates a deal, you will have the leverage, and that'll be 380,000 residents for universal trash service. Code of Conduct. Code of Conduct was not on the February 2nd agenda, and it's not on the agenda today. How do you justify reading a Code of Conduct before public comments? And the penalties can be relinquish the podium, physical removal from the auditorium, or being banned from Board of Commissioners meetings. That is a double standard. The board should take a yes or no vote so we all know who should be held accountable for violating Robert's rules of order or a lack of decorum. I heard the word <clears throat> accountable used three times at the end of the last work session. Now that just reeks of blatant hypocrisy. 
I'm not asking for a vote. If a vote is acceptable, it should be mandatory. But what do I know? I'm not the chairman yet. <laughs> any questions? Y'all got any questions? <laughs> Thank you, sir. So. All right. Jean-Claude Bourget. Good evening, Chairman. Good evening, Commissioners. My, uh, my name is Jean-Claude Bourget, and I live in Clayton County. Uh, why am I here? Okay. I am uh, proud to say that I have served as a board member of the Development Authority of Clayton County this past year, and I am uh, very excited about the progress that uh, the Development Authority has made. As you know, the Development Authority is instrumental in providing financing for businesses uh, that want to come to the county and those are already in the county. So that financing, also to seek to bring new businesses and ultimately jobs for the community. Over the past year, the Development Authority has been successful in increasing the number of new bond customers and renewing existing bond customers, which will result in an increase in overall revenue and jobs for the community. Additionally, as the pandemic took, toll, took a toll on small businesses throughout the nation, we made sure to take care of our, uh, our, of our own. The Development Authority provided a half a million dollars in grant to our local businesses and was instrumental in also in assisting the county in distributing over $700,000 in additional grant funding. The Development Authority has also partnered with community development to, to help increase the census participation by 20%, which resulted in over 4.1, which will result in over $4.1 billion in the next 10 years. This is a major economic engine for, the, for our county. I'm proud to serve on this board as we have a cohesive team that is committed to working with the commissioners to move the county forward. And I look forward to having an opportunity to continue to serve on the Development Authority Board. Thank you. Thank you. Mickey Garber. <clears throat> Commissioner, may I remove my mask, please? Yes, sir. Madam Clerk, Mickey Garber, Unincorporated, Rex, Georgia. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, and fellow citizens, the topic of my conversation is our litter problem. The topic of conversation is to set the tone to the problem. And my tone in this conversation is to create a tone of inclusiveness of all the citizens, businesses, and all the peoples doing business in this county as a partnership rather than an air of adversarialism. We are all in this problem together. And let me add, do not abolish the Keep Clayton Clean and Beautiful program because my tone may change. Thank you. Christopher Galley. Chairman and Commissioners. Uh, I came on behalf to speak again about the homes being built by our community. Uh, when I had moved in, you know, it was a beautiful community. There were expensive homes. Unfortunately, they did build one development in there of cheaper homes, only starting at 800, uh, at 85,000 to 125 instead of the 300,000 on up. The homes were, you know, that's the community that we have a lot of problems with. This year alone, we've had 
for you know different episodes of gunfire across the street on New Clinton County Walking Trail, and that's where they ran right into is that subdivision. I run the neighborhood watch. That's where 90% of our problems are there. Now they say they want to build something compatible with something we have, but it's not right next to there. It's like at least you know half a mile, you know, to a mile down the road from it there. So you're gonna build these homes that the homes on Plantation Parkway or on Olmstead that they can walk right out their back door and right into the yards there. Now right down the street, they're building 425,000 plus homes up there. Now they keep saying that it's Clayton County, you can't get you know money for being Clayton County, which you know, Clayton County is a great county. And I'm tired of hearing because you're in Clayton County, we can't do it. And it's just squeezing in the 39 homes you know, just built bigger homes, nice homes. They're an asset to our community there. You know, they're gonna squeeze the homes in there. They have no pool, no amenities or whatever. Are they gonna try to sneak over, you know, try using our amenities or whatever, but the builder's gonna make his money. You know, the landowner, he's gonna make his money and then they're just gonna move on there. But uh, we need something in there that's gonna be an asset to our community. You know, not, you know, something that's gonna, you know, bring it down there and, uh, a lot of people are upset about it, and a lot of the elderly, you know, we've a lot of elderly in there. They couldn't make it tonight, you know, the cold, you know, driving a bad weather there. But I'm hoping that you guys vote against this, that you say you can build in there, but just build bigger homes, less homes there that really add to Clayton County. I mean, we have a great county, you know, and I, I just want to protect all our home values there. And it, I don't want to see them go any lower, you know, than they are there. You know, when you put in the new trail in there, it's gonna be beautiful there. But you know, once those homes are built there and then the building, you know, and the land are gone there, you know, we're the ones that have to deal with them. So I'm asking you to tell them, no, less homes, just build bigger homes and quality homes. I'm asking you, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Looks like Matthew Miley. Matthew. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Matthew Miley, and I live in Clayton County. And uh, I'm here to, uh, I guess, uh, again, to uh, ask the commissioners about uh, the zoning of some homes near where where my, my, my subdivision is. That Mr. Gallagher was talking about. Um, we uh, the homes in, in our area are, are, are well over are well over two hundred thousand dollars, and there's a proposal to uh, to put in smaller homes, which would naturally lower the value of what we already have there, and I'm I'm hoping that that commissioners would be able to uh, see fit not to uh, uh, let that go through as it is proposed right now. So, uh, and that is, to, to, uh, it would naturally it would lower the value of our homes that are already there. And, and we've been there now for, well, I'm in, I'm in, in 20 years there now. And, and I know Mr. Gallagher is a lot lower than that. So uh, we are, we are, are opposed to to the, the homes being built as they are proposed at this time, without some some amendment amendments to it, to uh, to, 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 to so they don't be so cheap. All right, and uh, cheap homes bring more than just cheap people. It brings it brings crime and everything else. And right now. Uh, I'm proud to say that based on uh, our meetings with the police departments and what have you, River's Edge is one of the safest communities in the, in, in the, uh, in, in, in the Georgia, in, in the Atlanta area. River's Edge is one of the safest homes, one of the safest places 
and, and, the, and the whole area. Uh, and, and that's it. And you can ask the police department about that, right? Uh, we, we, uh, we meet continually with our police officers. Uh, they keep up abreast of what's going on. We've got a, uh, we've got a, uh, a, a neighborhood watch that is the envy of everybody that we meet with because of, of the way we operate and the things that we get done. So, and we'd like to keep that. So we're asking you to, for, for your help in, in, in helping us keep our community safe, all right? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Madam Clerk, that concludes the public comment. <clears throat> The board will not entertain the consent items. All right, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Is there a second? I'll make the second. Any questions, any other items? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. The next item is item number eight which is resolution 2021-36 abolish keep clayton clean and beautiful program Good evening. I have uh, resolution 2021-36, which is a resolution to abolish the Keep Clayton Clean and Beautiful program and all related budgeted positions within the program, to authorize the, chief, ch the chairman to perform all acts necessary to carry out the intent of this resolution, to authorize the chief financial officer to amend the budget to reflect the revenue source and expenses may be required to provide an effective date of this resolution for other purposes. All right. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? A second, Mr. Chair. Probably moving in a second. Are there any questions? I do. Um, I, I guess we put this in. When did we put this, vote this into uh, existence? I think it was two about years a year, ago. Or so. Was it two years ago? or About a year and a half. A year and a half ago. And we have allocated how much funding towards this so far? Roughly about $45,000 that we discussed in work session. We've had a COVID season that has hampered them from showing any ability to promote success. My question is, it's not even a question. We've had citizens come up here and discuss how we need initiatives to put forth to keep this county cleaner and begin to bring up its facade. And for us to go ahead and to get rid of something that we've not given the ability and the latitude to be successful, I have to ask, have we put forth the proper protocol in trying to, in trying to create our county and keep, and keep our county beautiful? I think we've got to begin to look at this. Um, a $45,000 initiative is not a huge initiative to throw at something to begin to create um, exponential value in, in taking our county forward. Uh, to your point, I think that $45,000 is indicative of a salary that we pay for the young lady who mm -hmm. uh, mans that position. But you are absolutely right. We hear all the time about how we want to beautify and start cleaning up our county. <clears throat> we created a, a department or a unit that is going to bring initiatives, also, it was my desire to hope, hopefully we can get Greene County uh, designation as well to start bringing together organizations and people and businesses to join in to help us because we all know it's going to take all of us to keep this county clean just like it would any other county. But somebody has to be that point person uh, and we're not speaking, we're, we're talking about the, the, keep, <clears throat> the initiative itself. Uh, has value. We, in my opinion, would be doing the county a disservice by abolishing this department at this time, I especially. I agree. And also, and I'd like to add, 
we had a gentleman just get up here and talk about being an asset to the county. Uh, this initiative is an asset to our county. And for us to begin to look at eliminating this and also eliminating a job during the COVID season, I believe is a little bit insensitive in moving this county forward. Any other questions, comments, statements? I have one. I want to ask you all a question, and this is not a sidebar conversation because this is the board speaking at this time. So let me ask you a question. If you said that it's been a, a year and a half, so if my roof was leaking or your roof was leaking at your house and it was storming in your home and you paid somebody a year and a half prior to make sure that the leaks were no longer there, but yet and still not only are the leaks there, but then there are buckets of water that you're having to tote out of your home. <clears throat> after a year and a half of paying somebody for a service. Do you feel that you are doing a disservice to yourself if you continue to pay that person or that position and keep that position in place? Can I answer that? Yeah, I didn't. Please. Didn't You're welcome Please. to let me, answer let me, that. Let me answer that. There, there's, there's, there's a little, you are, are you going to let me answer or you want to keep hold, moving? Hold on a second, Commissioner. Go ahead, Commissioner uh -oh, Frank. Oh, it's okay. Go ahead. You were saying? Commissioner Franklin. I was saying, and not only that, we need to correct the amount because the last meeting when I asked, now let me say, this item was on the agenda for presentation. I received several phone calls from the news media outlet because after this board received the presentation of what had not been done, including from our COO, who both you, both the chairman and the COO are over operations, and Felicia, Franklin, as a commissioner, voted for this initiative because I believe that this county needs to be cleaned up. It was stated that it's been a year and a half, as Commissioner Davis has confirmed, that this program has been in place, but there has been no accountability. And I'm glad you brought up COVID-19 because guess what? In the middle of COVID-19, I have received numerous complaints about trash, even as recent as of today, holding us accountable for the way our county looks. The trash still has to be picked up. We still have to offer methods to be able to deal with this trash. But I don't understand how we can say when we are getting into a more um, restrained financial season that we can say that it's okay to continue to spend not 45000 because I was asked in the last meeting when we got that presentation to give us enough time to get the amount that we spent. It's not 45000 We actually put away uh, close to about 100000 for this department, and I voted for that. So I'm accountable to the people who have elected me. And I voted for this over a year and a half ago with, and we've not gotten any type of um, response or any type of solutions until we had a presentation last week. Now I'm gonna take it a little bit further. I was told and we were told there was gonna be a communication or presentation from code enforcement. And we know code enforcement is having to respond all the time. That presentation has been pushed off and then what the board has seen after the presentation from Keith Clayton Beautiful, what they're going to do is that we saw press releases sent out. So I asked both commissioners who made comments, are we being financially responsible as well as well, fiscally responsible and responsible to our community to continue to spend money in a way that we've gotten no response on? Or would it be a better idea for us to allow the area which we just consolidated so that we can have more efficiency and effectiveness to be able to give them an opportunity to have presented and then also be able to uphold them and support them to be able to make sure that this trash is dealt with because they're in meetings. They are in meetings. They have gone to meetings. They have made sure that in the middle of COVID, they're cooperating with the sheriff's office and other offices, CIDs and BIDs. Let's give them the support that they need. So I ask you again, are we being responsible? Commissioner Davis. She stated in her first point. I'm commissioner, sir. Please don't refer to she. I have been very calm. We will refer to one another as commissioner. I am not she. I am okay, not he got commissioner. He got, he got the point, commissioner, commissioner Franklin alluded to her first point, which was if your roof was leaking. There is an ice storm and a snowstorm going on in Houston and Dallas. 
and there are roofs leaking and pipes busted. Why do I know this? Because my daughter called me yesterday morning. But guess what? While that ice and snow is on the road, there is no one that can get there to fix it. During this COVID season, it is like ice being on our road and snow being in their way. We have not allowed these folks to get here to fix this issue. Now, I have to ask, there's trash, and yeah, there is trash out there as of today. But before Keep Clayton Beautiful was voted in, was there trash the day before that? And as of today, if we got rid of Clayton Beautiful, is there trash going to be there tomorrow? So whose fault is it that the trash is there? Is it Keep Clayton Beautiful or is it someone else's? Keep Clayton Beautiful should be an asset to us to get this county cleaned up. Okay. If it is a detriment financially or functionally, then we should remove it. But they've not proven either. So for that reason, I think they need to be given a chance to be successful here in this county. Let me ask a question of the CFO, Ms. Bevins. Hold on a second, Ms. Bevins. Yes. Ms. Bevins, do you have the report of how much we actually spent last year on the Keep Clayton Beautiful initiative? Uh, yes, sir. Hold on just a moment. I just put up the email. I sent an email back on the 26th. And um, when I went back and looked, in fiscal year 2020, during the first year of operation, the total expenditure for that program was $50,000. Of that amount, 138 was spent on office supplies, and the remaining amount was spent for salaries and benefits. $138? Uh, I'm sorry? How much, how much in supplies? $138 was spent for office supplies and the balance of the 50000 was spent for salaries and benefits. Um, as of January 26th, when, even when I sent the email, the estimated total expenditure so far had, is, was $40,345, which is all salary and benefits. Nothing else has been spent out of that $150,000 that was approved as part of the budget. And how much money is budgeted for the program? It's $150,000. And if that money is not used, what becomes of it? Um, it goes back into the general fund. And if the program is still in place, then a new budget will be placed, uh, will be uh, not amended, but will be set for that program, correct? That, that is correct. Okay. Mr. Chair? Commissioner Gregory. Yes, sir. I would like to say that we have already had a work session on this and, and everyone heard and everyone made their um, uh, opinions. And I, I think I mentioned that even on some social websites, you know, people are talking about us because we have supposedly put this program before and nothing's getting done. Um, we've all been through COVID. However, we all use Zoom. We use everything else to capture and try to connect with our people to get things done. Um, I, I feel like this is putting the cart before the horse right now. We talk about doing things like the uh, mandatory trash that will clean up the county. Then we can keep Clayton County beautiful. But I just don't believe, you know, um, uh, right now it, it, it's the time for this and we'd be better spent spending that money with the warden and someone else cleaning up this county right now because nothing's getting done and I can't, honestly, I can't go back out there to the taxpayers and explain to them how we're spending that $150,000 and they just roll past all this trash and see somebody throw out the trash and no one's out here trying to get organizations or to contact organizations. Uh, I read something on Facebook today where people were saying they never even heard of it until all of a sudden um, Robin Kemp is putting out something about they keep Clayton beautiful. Come on, you know it's 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 not. It's, we've already been through all this with the work session. Well, uh, thank you for your comments. But the, each commissioner has a right to revoice their opinion. Uh, but I will say this because I think there is some confusion as to what Cle Keep Clayton Beautiful initiative is. It's programmatic. It's somebody who is work who works to gain uh, partnership and collaboration from community to help 
come up with programs to keep the county clean. It's not a program that's going to go out there and actually pick up the trash, but they are actually, hold on a second, Commissioner, actually putting together programs, organizations, and people that help in that initiative as well. Um, yeah. All right, anything else? You're so right, Mr. Chair. And so with that being stated, I move for uh, the question to just take a vote. It's been properly right, moved the and question, seconded. The qu question has been posed. Is there a second? We already received a second, sir. From it was who? done by From Commissioner who? Gregory. From who? Commissioner Gregory okay, seconded. I did, not hear, I did not hear it until I recognize it, then it, it would Mr. not Mr. Chair, happen. can I please ask for the clerk who's the official person to go back and read the minutes back to us so we are no, on? No, if she's sucking it, she just nodded her head that she's sucking the motion. So we will move forward with the vote. Is Thank you, sir. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? No. That's uh, three to two, it passes, the question passes. So let's go to the vote. Uh, those in favor, say aye. I'm confused. What did we just do? We, we took the motion for on the question because you posed the question. That passes, so we go straight back to the vote because we had already taken a vote on the abolishment of the Keep Clayton uh, Clean initiative. So we're Mr. back Reed, for a vote on the original. <sighs> Commissioner Franklin, I would appreciate it if you would let me conduct this, this meeting, all right? I've been very patient and tolerant of all the outbursts, but it comes a time that, you know, it just it, it becomes too much. So please allow me to do what I'm supposed to be doing here. Uh, again, we are at the vote for the original, the original uh, resolution to abolish Keep Clayton Beautiful. We've got a first and a second. We had conversation, it was cut off. Now those in favor of abolishing, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Nay. Three, two, it passes. Next, and Mr. Chair, next I'm Madam still Clerk. confused on what we just did and I was not trying well, that's to. A, that's okay, Commissioner Franklin. We're not confused. I'm not confused. So we really? Uh, Madam Clerk, let's proceed. The next item is item number 14, resolution 2021-42. Resolution providing for an establishing supplemental compensation Uh, a resolution 2021-42, which is a resolution providing for and establishing supplemental compensation for certain employees of the state of Georgia and other positions within county offices that are performing duties essential to county operations. To authorize the chief financial officer to amend the budget where necessary to reflect an appropriate revenue source and expense, to provide an effective date, to repeal conflicting laws, and for other purposes. All right, is there a motion? So move. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Are there any questions? All right, hearing none, those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? Which one was that? I'm sorry. <laughs> that was item 14, resolution 2021-42. Was it the 4-2 or 4-1? 4-2. 4-2, yes. Those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. I'm doing the nay too with that 42. We didn't, that's the one we didn't discuss, right? Right. Okay, three, two, it passes. Next matter, clerk. Mr. Chairman, the next items 21 through 27 of board appointments. Okay, first board appointments to the Department of Behavior Health. This is Commissioner Davis's uh, selection. Ms. Janice Scott term will expire on February 28, 2021. New term will begin February 28, 2021 and expire February 28, 2024. Commissioner Davis. I move we reappoint Ms. Janice Scott to that board. 
Uh, second the motion. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. All right, next board appointment is to the Development Authority Board. Uh, this uh, is a uh, Chairman Turner selection. Ms. Deborah D. G Green appointment expires <clears throat> March 1st, 2021. New term begins March 1st, 2021 and will expire March 1st, 2025. I would like to uh, recommend Connor J. Uh, to this board. Is there a second? I'll second it. Probably moved and second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Next appointment is also to the Development Authority Board. It's Commissioner Davis's selection. Ms. Mr. Jean-Claude Bourget, a term will expire March 1st, 2021. New term begins March 1st, 2021, expires March 1st of 2025. Commissioner Davis. I move we hold that appointment to March 2nd meeting. All right, if, as long as there's nobody opposed, and it's your selection, Madam Clerk moves move that selection to the next uh, board board meeting. Next board of meetings also, appointment rather, is also to the Development Authority. Ms. Michelle Fuqua, term will expire. This is Commissioner Franklin's uh, selection. Uh, on March 1st, 2021, new term will Begin March 1st, 2021, expire March 1st, 2025. Commissioner Franklin. I move that we uh, appoint Mr. Randy Burton, who with his term expires uh, March 1st, 2021. I, didn't, I don't think I understood your last. Mr. Randy Burton is under item 27, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I'm oh, sorry, item 26, Mr. Chairman. And so we okay, have. Okay, so he's already sit currently on the board. You just want to reappoint him after okay, his good. appointment ends. We don't know. No, I'm um, sorry. It would not be a reappointment because he would be appointed underneath me as commissioner. Right now, he's under Commissioner Hambrick based upon what we passed previously with the board appointments. Those in favor, aye. Second. Yes, second. Oh, is there a second? Wait. I'll second. second. All right, those in favor, 20, aye. 26. No, no, don't don't worry about that part. Just uh, twenty four. Yes, we're on we're on twenty four. And she's putting Randy. Okay, gotcha. Who made the second? I seconded. Uh, Davis. Commissioner Davis. Okay. All right. Next board appointments to the Development Authority as well. Commissioner Gregory's appointment. Uh, Mr. Sylvester Ford term expires March first, twenty twenty one. New term begins March first, twenty twenty one. Expires. March 1st, 2025, Commissioner Gregory. Yes, sir. I offer a motion to uh, uh, place Mr. John Lample from Morrow mm -hmm. on the Development Authority. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Next appointment is also to the Development Authority Board, Commissioner Hambrick's appointment, Mr. Randy Burden. Term expires March 1st, 21. New term will begin March 1st, 2021, expires March 1st, 2025. Commissioner Hambrick. Uh, yes, I would like to appoint Ms. Emma Godby. Is there a second? A second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Pose. It's unanimous. Next board appointments, Park and Recreation. Commissioner Davis, uh, Mr. Steve Lundquist has resigned from the Park and Recreation Advisory Board. New appointment will begin immediately and will expire December 31st, 2022. Commissioner Davis. Move uh, appoint Mr. Charlton Bivens to his seat. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Uh, Commissioner Hambrick, nay. Oh. That's not me. Uh, that was Felicia, Commissioner okay. Franklin. Commissioner, Commissioner Franklin, Franklin nay. is one day, four one, it passes. Uh, Madam Clerk, that concludes it. Okay. The next item is item number 28, BOC 2003 0045. It's a request to rezone RS 180 to PUD. And is this is a public hearing? It's back for public hearing. Yeah, we have one already. 
Okay, so if it is, uh, citizens may speak for or against an item that is considered by law to be a zoning decision. Each side will have 10 minutes to present its case. In the event there is more than one speaker per side, speakers must divide their time in order to complete their full presentation within the 10 minute time allotment. When the time runs out, speakers will be expected to immediately cease speaking. Applicants or citizens speaking in favor of an item will speak first. Applicants in zoning ordinance cases should have the right to reserve time for rebuttal. Opponents of the zoning decision shall have no right of rebuttal. When speaking, speak directly into the microphone and begin by stating your name, address, and name of any organization you represent. Abusive, profane, or derogatory language will not be permitted. Holding signs, clapping and yelling to show support will not be permitted, but a show of hands or quietly standing will be permitted to show support. Good evening, Chairman and Board Members. Uh, Tyler McSwain representing Planning and Zoning staff here. Uh, the first item, 28 for zoning, BLC 2003-0045. Uh, the applicant battle law PC on behalf of Blackstone Investment Company is requesting to rezone 25.17 acres of land from single family RS-180 to PUD. Uh, staff has received acknowledgement from the applicant that has written consent to table this request uh, 30 days into the March 1st, uh, BO, excuse me, the March BOC meeting, which is March the 16th. Again, items 28 and 29 are companion cases. So again, the applicant may be on board to speak if she's available, but staff is supporting the request to table. All right, so the applicants either here or... Do we have a She's letter here. or anything, email? We have a written uh, letter. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Hambert, how would you like to proceed? Uh, yes, I would like to uh, table or defer this till until uh, March, and I'm not sure what that date 16th. is. 16th. I'm sorry, what is that, the third? The 16th. 16th, Commissioner. Oh, 16th. March, March 16th. All right, is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. It's unanimous. Next. The next item <clears throat> is item number 29, LS2006-009, preliminary plat requesting a new 121-unit single-family attached townhouse community. Okay. Again, this item is companion to item number 28, uh, this is the preliminary plat for the new subdivision uh, on behalf of Battle Law. Uh, the applicant is also requesting a table for this item as well to the March 16th date for BOC. Commissioner Hambert. Well, first of all, I'd like to, to make a correction on that. Uh, I believe uh, you read into the minutes that this is a request for 121 units. This is a request for 100 units. That is correct, it's for 100 units. The uh, first submittal was for 121, they reduced it to 100. Okay, with that correction, I would like to table or defer. Till the March 16th date. Yes, thank you, I'm sorry, I had it on mute, I'm sorry. Yes, I would like to table or defer that March 16th with the correction of 100 units instead of 121. All right, is there a second? A second, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Gregory second the motion. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. The next item is item number 30, BOC-2011-0074 to allow a place of worship. Okay. Lastly, the item number 30, this request is for conditional use. The Zone Advisory Board recommended approval of this request. Staff recommended approval as well with this request with conditions, and I shall read those for the record. One, the applicant must provide a buffer adjacent east of the townhome community with the minimum setback of 25 feet. And lastly, condition number two, must adhere to all county codes and regulations pertaining to site development except relief may be granted by the Board of Zoning Appeals or other authorized agents. 
And that concludes the conditions for this request. All right, the applicants here, please come forward. Hello, good evening. Amanda Williams. Address is 1595 Battle Creek Road, Jonesboro, Georgia. And how many minutes would you like to reserve for any rebuttal or somebody should be against your request? Um, what do you suggest? Usually about two minutes two or minutes. so, but it's up to you. Two minutes? Two minutes? Yes. Okay. Set the timer for eight minutes, so technically you have eight minutes to state your case as to why this should be approved. Um, thank you so much, um, Chairman. Um, we believe that this should be approved because we believe it will be a great asset to the uh, community. It was originally a lounge, so it was already providing a great service to the community. I know several people come by saying that they done community service at the lounge and they've had events there and with them no longer being there us being there as a church will be able to provide services to the community and also um, just be a, a family centered um, type of place of worship um, adhering to COVID while COVID is still in place and hopefully COVID will be over soon for everyone and we'll be able to um, you know not have the COVID restrictions to provide services to the community as a church. Where exactly is this on Battle Creek? Um, it's on oh, Battle Creek. Uh, Chairman Turner, this property is right across from the Clayton County Water Authority. Okay, I got you. Yes, once, got once you. previously known as the Moose Lounge, if I'm not. Yes. Okay, that's correct. I got Moose you. Lounge. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Is there anybody here who'd like to speak in favor of this applicant's request? Anybody like to speak in favor <laughs> of? Anybody would like to speak in opposition to? Anybody in opposition? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to say something. Come forward. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I'm removing my mask, please. Yes. Madam Clerk, Mickey Garber, Unincorporated Rex, Georgia. <clears throat> I took the opportunity in this position for to speak about any new construction in Clayton County and to bring continuity and safety to all our citizens. At this point, I would like to say that any construction, whether residential, commercial, or industrial, to give us connectivity in all aspects for citizens of the county, that we should have sidewalks in place and this should be written into our codes. Any construction have sidewalks for safety and to give us safety and con continuity. continuity to all the citizens. Yes, sir. Not to be disrespectful to <clears throat> any church group or anybody. I just felt this. I had to take this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Anybody else like to speak in opposition to? Commissioner Davis. I move that we approve this with the conditions as stated. Please state the conditions. Okay, the conditions are one, provide a buffer adjacent east of the town home community with, the, with a minimum setback of 25 feet, and two, must adhere to all count Clayton County codes and regulations pertaining to site development, except where relief may be granted by the Board of Zoning Appeals or other authorized agencies. Ma'am, if you would come back to the podium. You heard the conditions set yes. forth. Are you in agreement with it? Yes, we're in agreement. All right, Commissioner Davis, you said to yeah, approve with conditions. Yes, sir. Okay, I'll second that motion. Any questions? All right, here now, the, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you.
Mr. Reed. Yes, sir. We need a uh, executive session on personnel, real estate, and litigation. All right. I'll make the motion to go into executive session for personnel, real estate, and litigation. Is there a second? Second. Probably move to second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Everybody have a good night. God bless. All right. Is there a motion to reconvene? So move. I'll second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. It's unanimous. Let's have roll call right quick. Commissioner DeMont Davis. Present. Commissioner Sonna Gregory. Present. Commissioner Felicia Franklin. I'm here. Commissioner Gail Hambrick. Present. Mr. Reed. Um, I have a settlement agreement in the matter of Jasmine Carter, J-A-Z-Z-M-Y-N, uh, versus Clayton County. Uh, this is individually and also as the parent of <coughs> Jahan Maynard, J-A-H-O-N, in Clayton <coughs> County State Court Civil Action File Number 2020 CB 00184 in the amount of $45,000 with $35,000 to go to Jasmine Carter and $10,000 to go um, for um, her son, Jahan Maynard. All right, is there a motion? So move. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Any questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, opposed? It's unanimous. That's all I have. All right. Motion to adjourn. So motion. moved, Mr. Chair. I'll second the motion. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. It's unanimous.